Good morning, everyone. See, I could release this video. Since it's morning, I might as well grab my coffee. I could release this video at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And it wouldn't really be a lie for me to tell you good morning if I say, you know, in my head, well, it is morning for me when I'm recording the video, even though it might not be morning for the person watching the video. Although even if I release the video in the morning, someone might watch it in the afternoon, so it might not be the morning for them. Or someone might be on the other side of the planet watching the video, and even though it's morning for me, when they're watching it, might not be morning for them there. So, is it a lie? How does misinformation work? When you give out information that's true, but there's some sort of bias or misunderstanding that goes along with the information because of how it's understood. Because it's naively taken. That's what we're going to talk about. If you ever notice um, on YouTube, there's sometimes these topics, these debates that run rampant in the news and online. Let me move you guys a little closer. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I got the flag behind me. Because I'm trying to be patriotic. I'm a veteran. My alarm's going off. And I'm concerned for my country because I've heard that Illinois the state of Illinois the state where I went to school and grew up in and joined the army from is essentially forcing people to get vaccines now sometimes in an argument there's sort of a straw man fa fallacy where somebody can basically just twist things. If you've ever had a sibling who would go to your parents and sort of twist the information, limit all the information, not tell the whole story. And then everyone, you know, the judge and the jury and everyone else thinks, oh, well, of course you're guilty. You could have been trying to prevent an emergency, but, you know, they just ask you the simple question, oh, did you break the rule? Did you touch the cookie jar? Yeah, I touched the cookie jar because my little sibling was pushing it off the edge and it was about to fall down and break on the ground, so I, I caught it. But if you just say, yes, I touched the cookie jar. <gasps> You wanted to get to those cookies now, do you? Yeah. We don't need any more questions. So when somebody says to be concerned about vaccines, is that the same statement as they're an anti-vaxxer? They're completely against the vaccines. Is it? Is it one or the other? Is it like... Is, is there only two options? Is it, I accept to get all possible vaccines from anyone on the planet, whoever recommends any possible vaccination from any company, regardless of what the disease is associated with the vaccine, regardless of when the vaccine is recommended to me, regardless of which laws tell me to take the vaccine, regardless of how much the vaccine costs, regardless of where it was manufactured, 
regardless of which doctor in which medical facility is injecting me with the vaccine. Because if I reject any one of those possible things, then I suppose I'm an anti-vaxxer because I'm against a vaccine, right? It's one or the other, right? Either you accept all of it, every possible vaccine that was ever thought of in any conception of anyone's mind ever, or you're a complete anti-vaxxer 100%. It's one or the other. There's no possible way that it there could possibly someone... And, and I'm just telling you what I see from YouTube comments. This is what, like, everyone comments on YouTube comments. So either it's being filtered purposely or people just have no idea. The, the common people, most people have no idea what's actually going on. So tell me, is it one or the other? Or... Is it possible, is it just possible that maybe there was a time in the past where we had a doctor who kindly came up with a smallpox vaccine to save people from massively perishing and not charge money to give this away? And he saved lives. And then later on, people wanted to make money. People wanted to start enforcing these things and make billions. Because they could get the whole country to take vaccines for all these little simple diseases that would never go away completely. And try to act like these diseases are definitely something that the vaccine is definitely the way. To counter it and definitely children need this and definitely we should enforce the law that we combine these three vaccines into one vaccine not necessarily so that this one particular company who was planning that could get more money is that possible is it possible that some people want to make money from vaccines I don't know. It seems like all the videos and all the... I mean, I have medical books. I have people that I've run into consistently in my life who have explicitly told me, oh yeah, you know, my child was doing great. Total genius, smart, could read really quickly. Everything was working fine. And then we went and got our shots. And then, bam obnoxious, ridiculous, can't concentrate, everything is wrong, psychopath ever since that specific day. Maybe after that night or something is when it started. In fact, that even happened to me. That happened to me. You know, when I was little, I memorized books full of Bible verses for Awana clubs. I mean, and I got them word perfect. Right? So, I had a good memory. And... But I also stuck to doing, I believed in hard work, and I believed in applying what I learned. When I would talk to my friends about, like, math, for example, they, they always thought, oh, that's for the classroom, right? Why were you talking about it right, right now? We're playing. Well, it's math. You know, the scientific method... It's not just something that happens in the classroom. It's something that you use to, to try to solve problems in real life. When I first heard it, I was like, wait, that's already the way I think. You want to test something because you don't really know what's going on, per se. 
that you think maybe you do, you have some ideas, but you you don't want to base your testing on your biases, on your ideas. You want to taste, you want to taste, you want to base your testing on what's going to give you information that you can record that's unbiased. See, because if you record your hypothesis and that's it, and just say, well, I tested something to do with this hypothesis, and you just record your hypothesis, you're going to eventually build something fake. You're going to build this fake, oh, well, we tested to see if a proton particle, blah, 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 attracts to an electron particle and particle, particle, par par particle. No, 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 no. That's not what they write down. When somebody does a test, they don't write down just the hypothesis. They say, well, we think that there exists this thing called a proton particle, but we don't really know how chemistry really works at the, you know, at these levels. But we do know that if we mix, you know, three milliliters of HCl with five milliliters of, you know, said base, boom, this happens at this rate. This is, we tested it at, you know, 20 different points. Here's all the data. So there's all these experiments with explicit data results. And they don't necessarily say, oh yes, this is definitely a particle. You can think of it as a billiard ball. Oh, this is, this is how the physics, you know, actually works. No, that, that's a bias. That's a guess. That's an idea. The real science is just your tested data. And from your tested data, you can, you can formulate all sorts of ideas. As long as they're consistent with the data, they're not wrong. You prove them wrong by coming up with some test that shows, yeah, that, no, that conflicts with that idea. But somebody could say there's miniature unicorns flying around and creating this process. And if their model, if their math describing how the unicorns are doing it all fits perfectly with every experiment that you've done, then you can, then there's no... There's nothing wrong with, with that. Now, somebody might, somebody who hears that might say, well, hold on, like Occam's razor. You want to go with the simplest. Yes, you want to go with the simplest set of axioms because basically because that's sort of shown statistically to be true. But what is the definition of simple? I mean, usually people find out, usually models I've noticed, um, tend to be simpler when they're slightly higher in dimensions. For example, uh, when it comes to 3D games, you have your, your, you have your 3D coordinates for, uh, for, sp for spherical coordinates to show where you're facing, left, right, up, down, and you have 360 degrees to, to the left and right, and you have 180 degrees up, and, and you have something called the gimbal lock. Now, when you interpolate, which means to find all the points between two points, so when the camera wants to, when you're when you you're designing a first-person shooter game and you interpolate the camera from this angle down to this angle, they found out that if you just try to change both your left and right angle and your up and down angle in a linear fashion, it it won't be a straight, it won't be the shortest line. So it'll, it'll look sloppy. But there's a simpler model, but it's not technically strictly simpler because it's actually a higher dimensional model so it uses four dimensions instead of three dimensions um and that's called a quaternion so they use they literally use in video games they use four complex numbers now didn't we say the the solution should be simpler not more complex right because simple and complex are basically the opposite right now what is a complex number it's it's a two-dimensional number basically because it has a real part and an imaginary part now this is a four-dimensional complex number so it has eight numbers basically in it. it has eight magnitudes literally you have eight numbers describing one vector of where you're trying to face and they'll have a matrix 
which is four numbers by four numbers. So then you have 16 complex numbers that you're using just to describe one movement, whether it's a rotation, whether it's a translation. You have 16 numbers for a quaternion. But you don't have to do any trig functions. And when you move from one camera angle to the other, it's perfectly smooth. It's the shortest possible path, including all the rotations. Everything is the shortest possible path. And it's described from a four-dimensional point of view, not from a spherical point of view, even though that's how we as humans perceive it. We're seeing a slice of something that's in a higher dimension. So even though it's more abstract and it's more complex for the human mind, when it comes to computational complexity, when it comes to just how much sheer work that needs to get done, it's actually simpler. So bringing this back to my original point, Vaccines came from a good background, from a very purposeful point. It was very, the concept of try to prevent this person from dying of this deadly disease seemed sort of a, a simple point, even though we don't know exactly what's going on, even though we don't know precisely all, all the information going on but you have to use scientific thinking you can't just say well the hypothesis is you know we take the vaccine or these people will die and look people took these vaccines and people didn't die so therefore our hypothesis must have been correct don't write down hypothesis write down the data the data was including the context, including the technology, including the fact that it was smallpox when vaccines were, you know, first started, you know, and the plague or whatever these horrible deadly diseases were. But you have to include all the information all the time for every statement you come up with. And it's true that diseases are more complex than that. They're not just these, they exist, or they don't exist type thing. They actually mutate and they get complex and there's different types of diseases. And if you continually try to block them out with antibiotics and things like that, you actually kill off, you know, good biotics. You kill off things in your own body, potentially. Now that's different from a virus. I understand that antibiotics and vaccines are different things because one of them's meant to stop a virus and one's meant to stop a bacteria but that's that's a that's good information but my point is is that both in both cases it's it's more complex than just there's a single disease that has one type of genetic information for example in a virus or one type of bacteriophage in a bacteria. There's lots of things going on. Your body is complex. You have proteins that are the, the genetic information from proteins is known, is shown to be way more complex, to contain potentially way more information than just a DNA strand. And the DNA strand is already a huge. It's already huge when it comes to information. Don't let misinformation control your thinking. It's easy to jump on a bandwagon and be like, well, this is easy. Flat earthers are idiots. The end. I guess I'm not an idiot because I'm not a flat earther. <laughs> no. It's the people who think that they know what they're talking about that are the most dangerous because they're not looking at who's smarter than them. They're not looking at 
even when they are the smartest, they're not always looking at all of the information and doing their best to be the most moral. You have to be able to be, if you, if you really want to do what's right, you basically have to accept the fact that you could be 10 times more knowledgeable and 10 times more intelligent about a subject than anyone else on the planet, and you still have to be brutally honest with everything that you're perceiving and understanding. You have to be very careful even at that point. You really do. Because when you look back on things, I mean, just because someone was quote unquote the best at something, they compared to the technology that, that came after, it, it was crude. It was still easy for them to make mistakes. I mean, Edison had, you know, very poor methods for for inventing things, but he was praised. He got so much money. But Tesla said, you know, you got to do this more efficiently. And, you know, Tesla eventually died without money. But now when we look back on things, we're like, whoa, Tesla was, he knew what he was talking about. Like, we didn't know what he was talking about, but we didn't give him any benefit of the doubt. We didn't give him any credit. We just said, well, maybe this crazy guy talking about, like, electrostatic stuff knows something. Maybe all his spirituality talk has some sort of meaning, but we just, eh, we don't get it. We don't got to put our money there. I really prefer to do videos where I'm interviewed. Because it's hard to stick to... proving a point or explaining a point when somebody's not there to keep on asking questions and saying, well, what about this? Well, don't people think this, though? Um, and I would gladly do that. I would gladly answer those things. Um, but I guess I can try to think of, you know, some question. So maybe somebody wants to, maybe someone would ask, so... How do I know? What, what do I look at? How do I know if a vaccine is a good thing to get for my child? What is, what am I really saying here? How do I know, what's the difference between being an anti-vaxxer and just being someone who I potentially knows something about vaccines, but isn't necessarily against them? Well, my answer is, do your own research. I mean, you can go and you can talk with people who have gotten the vaccine for themselves or who have gotten it for their children personally. Don't ask the government agency or the medical institution or anyone who's just there for theory. Anyone who's just commenting on YouTube saying, well, it's either your kids die or this. Those people are just talking about theoretical ideas that they think make sense because they're just taking the standard definition of a vaccine saying well it's something that prevents you from getting such and such virus and then applying it to real life assuming that there's no other variables so don't don't just talk to them because that that's obvious everyone knows that everyone knows what a vaccine's for, at least ideally. But you also know that there's money behind things. There's politics behind things. There's a lot of money behind things. And there's experience behind things, and there's some of that experience is censored. So you have to go and talk with those people directly. Say, hey, have you ever gotten this... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What happened? What happened? Did, you, did, did your child change at all? Oh, no, they're fine. Oh, yeah, they changed. Yeah. Ask them yourself. What happened? Um, and then look at, look at the cases for diseases and actually inspect and read medical articles where somebody... 
um, you know, came down with a case of a disease, even worse after they've got a vaccination against those diseases, because the, the hospital isn't necessarily going to document all this stuff, because the hospital likes whatever makes them the most money. If they're, I mean, that's how things work these days. People don't want to document and have a history of, oops, we gave out these vaccines that didn't work. Of course, they're not going to say that. That's not how things work these days. People far too often want to just protect themselves. Now, you might say, well, then you might be doing that with your video. I could be. I mean, that is, we're in the United States, right? But I also grew up being taught certain values. And I understand that what that leads to is not good. <laughs> if we just are selfish all the time. Um, that, that doesn't end well. And I haven't even... I haven't even had my own children yet. Um, and I want, if, if I wanted to just go and take things for myself, I wouldn't be donating my money. I wouldn't be, you know, restricting what I say and, and the impact of what I do. I, w I would just go work for some company and if I happen to just not you know, know my job well, they could, you know, lose millions of dollars because I'm an idiot and um, they would get, you know, their files locked down from and, and, and all their, you know, have to have to pay like millions of dollars in ransomware because I just wanted to go work at some company and act like I knew what I was doing. I could have done that. I could have stayed in the military and just gotten a decent paycheck, which was a lot of money for basically not having to do much. I mean, there's a lot of things I could have done to just live a comfortable life if I just wanted the comfortable life, but it would be at the cost of the future of my country. It would be at the cost of, you know, my descendants and their descendants if you want to make it sound selfish so i mean what 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 am i going to get from this video maybe some trust or something okay we'll make it sound selfish but honestly when it comes to doing science in general when it comes to ultimately if you do want to make good money legitimately um good science and good mathematics is is doing what's right it's doing what's right with the data it's interpreting things truthfully um so It's kind of sad that people just jump on bandwagons because if you're truly honest, if you're completely honest, how could you just how could you just jump on on something and be like, "Well, you're just an idiot." To something so obvious. Like you should you should already be involved with more complex, more involved. You should be talking with doctors and, and nurses and they'll tell you the truth. I mean, they see it. They've been there. So if you're just on these YouTube videos commenting saying, well, you know, anti-vaxxers are idiots, blah, blah, blah. You're just furthering the same deception that you already fell into. You, you, you're like way over emphasizing how much you think you will really know. I mean, this, this is people, they're doctors who study, you know, their entire lives, 60 years. And they don't put a single comment on YouTube in their entire lifetime. And they know things that you would never know in your entire lifetime.
and and there's a, you know someone goes around and he he said he he labels oh is this person a doctor or are they a moron law of excluded middle buddy you can't assume that you can't assume because someone's not a doctor they're suddenly a moron for participating in one of these things that's the right of the people to protest it's the right of the people to know to to be involved with with what's going on they want to be informed they want to be against whatever corruption is going on there is corruption that does go on there's not just there's idiots out there and then everyone who has money is or everyone who enforces laws is correct that's not the case it's not the case that just because someone has money they're correct and it's also not the case that just because something's progress like newer like progressive is correct and it's not the case that just because someone enforces laws is correct so i'm sorry but like if you're for vaccines you know why don't i just come up with some random you know chemical and be like well i'll inject it in you i could hire a lawyer to try to say oh yeah that chemical yeah 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 it'll help kill off you know x bacteria or whatever you know it could it you know, he could sign off and say whatever he wanted. But that doesn't mean that it's right. It doesn't mean that it's the right thing to do. It doesn't mean that it's also not going to have other effects. It, it, it doesn't mean that... It doesn't prove that, you know... Somebody else out there was legitimately coming up with a good solution to the problem. And I, because of my assertiveness, pushed them away and pushed my own solution to the top and said, well, they're, ignore them. In fact, let's make a law against them stopping you from, from doing this because just get this injection. There's other ways to fight diseases. There, are, there definitely are. Um, and I can't say that saying that I'm a certified doctor. I'm just saying that as somebody who's been very closely associated with the medical industry and people who know a lot about the medical industry and who have studied the medical industry very legitimately and have gotten to the top of their classes, multiple people who have been at the top of their classes. And then the administrative people in their institutions basically reject them because they don't like their ideals or political stances. Not because they got something scientifically wrong. Not because they were lazy and didn't do their research. See, it, it comes down to politics. Because if we're just talking about science here, there's no support. There's no support for just going and getting all these, all these vaccines being the best solution. There's no, there's no proof that there aren't side effects for these things. There's political agendas that definitely will will push you that in that direction so stick to the good science it doesn't matter if the university blocks you out because you believe that you know the world was created six thousand years ago and you just simply question hmm wait a minute though how did the first dna strand and the second DNA strand first come about so that they could kind of multiply and start mutating and breeding and creating new possible organisms. Because isn't that how DNA replication works? So, you know, you might get kicked out for just questioning that. How, how did this first come about? Oh, well, you don't understand. You don't believe. You don't have enough imagination to believe in this evolution. 
What? That doesn't sound like science. Science is where you show something. Hey, look, this gene pool of dogs and this gene pool of dogs have been breeding for a while and look, we got poodles. Wow, breeding works. Cool. Genetic crossover looks like it m has this sort of model. That doesn't prove that DNA just came out of nowhere. That doesn't prove that where this cell originally came from. Is that how cells reproduce? No. That's not how cells actually reproduce. Cells split themselves into stem cells and their job cells or whatever you want to call them. It's not genetic crossover. See, there's so there's there's things that are political agendas that are out there and they're not scientific and it's and it's your job and it's your duty to just stand up for what's right and it doesn't matter if it's your boss your family it doesn't matter this is what abe lincoln said okay he said if someone needs to stand up to everyone else in the world then he should do it he should stand up to everyone else in the entire world if he really needs to because everyone in the world might think that he's wrong or everyone in the world might disagree with him but it doesn't matter that shouldn't stop this person from speaking the truth, from standing up for what's right. And that's what your that's what your duty is. That's what you should do. If you want to put it that way, I could say I'm asking you as a veteran to do what's right for the country and just just stick to the facts so no matter how biased people are among you you might have 20 friends that all say Haha, those anti-vaxxers are idiots don't you think so joe don't you think so joe aren't they idiots look at this article blah 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 you might have 20 friends that do that and your reaction could be like yeah yeah i uh I, yeah they're idiots yeah and just get some brownie points with them or you could say you could just be blunt and maybe misunderstood and you could say well what is incorrect about what they said now you're not saying that what they said is correct ha <laughs> joe <laughs> what do you mean do you believe don't tell me you believe that i'm no, i'm gonna block you on facebook because you believe that is that what you're gonna do when your friends talk to you that way are you gonna cave in or are you gonna just ask what is wrong with what they said that's what i did that's what i did in fact that's what i did with christians with religious people when i was at plm people came up to me and they're like that guy who came up to you and was rambling all this crazy stuff don't you think he was like something was wrong with him and all i said was what was wrong with what he said that's all i said i didn't agree with what he said i didn't disagree with what he said i just asked the guy what was wrong with what this this other person who sounded like he was crazy said what was wrong with what he said you could answer that uh okay you know and then you're treated distantly because that's what people do this is how you have to counter human bias you in the scientific community and people who you think you believe the same things with guess what even the mathematics community all right there's this guy who is mathematics it seemed like he understood math really well he had a phd and he was kind of telling me one time about, um, you know, homeopathy or something. And saying, well, don't they just, you, you, you got to be careful because they might just put a little bit of snake oil. Just scam you. I just ask, does, does it work or not? 
So no matter who it is, even yourself, maybe that's the first step. Maybe you have a bias and your reaction is, that person's full of himself. <laughs> that person is crazy. Oh, that person, there's something wrong with him. Oh, and you just jump to conclusions without an actual, you need to ask yourself, wait a minute, how can I say that statement? How do I prove that statement? How do I prove that this person is, is full of himself? Perfectly prove it. There's no doubt. There's no misunderstandings. I need to actually prove it. I don't think you can prove it because it's not even a mathematical statement. How do I how do I prove that this person is wrong in what they said? How do I prove that this person is is crazy? Do I think is this person crazy? How do I pr how do I actually know that? Am I just going along with the fact that there's everyone else in the world thinks that? And then any anyone who ever believes the same thing that they believe will just jump in the bandwagon and say, well, they're crazy too. Well, of course, by that definition, those people will always be crazy because they'll always be defined as crazy. Be In this self-fulfilling process. It's just circular thinking. If you, if you, if, <laughs> you know... Imagine, you know, a th you know, a thousand years ago, someone says, oh, I think the world is round. <laughs> that guy is crazy. Joe's crazy. He thinks the world is round. Yeah, hey, yeah, Joe's crazy. Hey, I heard that Dwayne, you know, thought the world was round too. He must be crazy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's not let him, let's not let him join our, our married men's club because they're crazy. Oh, I heard Diane thought the world was round too. Hey, let's just let's just leave them out. Let's let's not invite them to dinner. They're crazy. And what do you get? You get people who live like nomads out there who everyone sort of treats like they're crazy. You get those people who live up in the mountains between India and China who eventually get persecuted by the government in China. You get, you know, religious sects and things like that. You, you, you got to understand how these things work. Standing up for the truth is not easy in the short, in the short term. It's not something that gets you a good result right away. What it does get you is it gets you rejection. It gets you harsh words. It gets you treated like you're an idiot. It gets you misunderstandings. It gets you hatred. Okay? It gets you... Read the story of Brother Yoon. It could literally get you tortured... And being poured your body with feces from your prison inmates who hate you. Okay. Standing up for the truth, if you think it's easy, if you think what I'm saying is anywhere near easy, it is the hardest thing that you will do. It is the hardest thing that anyone ever does. This is why the crucifix is this golden symbol, even though it's a torture symbol. Jesus wanted to help the Jews in the New Testament. And they manipulate things to have him tortured to death by the Romans. When he didn't do anything wrong, he didn't hurt anyone. He just stood up for the truth as best he could. So, who's your superhero? Right? Is this mechanical guy your superhero? This mechanical guy? Who has a heart made of... Made of metal? 
is a heart does the heart have electromagnetic properties does your dna have quantum properties that are past what computers actually can do is dan winter right about you know your dna having you know something else other than just discrete genetic information in it is your superhero that guy with the mechanical iron man suit or is it the guy who takes the the crucifix and gets killed and tortured to death and accepts his death for standing up for what's right while he's misunderstood and laughed at So what I'm not really not really talking about vaccines as much as I'm talking about how far are you willing to go to stand up for what's right and if you fall short how much damage is going to result from that if you let one little person go without protecting them and saying something and standing up for someone you know could be right what's the result of that does it look like you only helped someone out who needs five dollars here or there for getting by or is what they're saying going to have billions of dollars worth of impact in the long run i met a guy when i was at going to school at university of illinois and he was he was middle-aged guy who was with a friend i think and he was just like memorizing verses in the bible and i and i felt bad for him because he didn't look like he had a good income or good living situation a good you know family but i i was able to go see where he lived because I, I helped print him something and i saw where he lived and it was hard to really interpret because some people might just say oh he's lost it but i think this guy was a genius he had an entire basement full of these three-dimensional origami shapes that could potentially be used to create structures like unfolding structures um, for civilizations on like the moon or on Mars or something like these were crazy polygonal foldable shapes and it was like ridiculous how many of these things how how he understood all, all these little shapes and how he had he, he had folded them all and created them all it was it was mind-blowing I don't even know how he figured out how to how to make those things or if he was how we how we, how he had come, came up with that if he was using you know following directions and combining ideas or what but this guy you know I think he was on to something I mean he 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 understood something and I don't know if he found the right people to talk to about those ideas but i could see how easily people could just ignore him because it doesn't hurt them to just ignore him it doesn't hurt them he's not their boss he's not in control of their paycheck So if it's just coming down to making money, what's going to help that guy out? The only thing really he has to offer is like a high risk business investment potentially that could make you money or an invention that could just help everyone. But we we don't get that unless we are willing to give him the benefit of the doubt and invest something. 
it's really sad. And, and if people, after all the research and all the books that are out there, and all the experience by legitimately good doctors and nurses, if the state of Illinois is essentially forcing vaccines unnecessarily, not based on statistics of children dying, but just based on general opinion that anti-vaxxers are idiots, and they're forcing specific vaccines. That's sad. That, that makes me very, very sad. I'm from Illinois originally. That's where I grew up, okay? That is also where I went to school. This is, I have an Illinois, you know, mathematics t-shirt. And I joined the military to pay for school. And then I was, and then I worked at a company that was compiling programming languages into their mathematical system. And I only did testing there because they looked at some grades and I think I had, I was in a hard situation and I, I failed linear algebra or something like that. And they, they didn't want me to, they never allowed me once to to input my own ideas of programming languages which i had studied independently on my own and wanted to offer it freely to them um i was rejected by by them basically so i'm losing track of where I, what i was talking about now I'm not trying to get like so deep and act like I'm some philosophical genius or anything like that. Okay. I am trying to get a little deep though because I know that I want people to think in a different way than what I'm seeing. I want people to just stand up for what's right, just stand up for what's true. And you don't have to go purposely against someone who's questioning you for, de you know, defending someone. You just have to ask the right questions. Just ask, ask the right questions. And if they reject you, if they say, well, you think that he's right, blah, blah, blah. Well, there's nothing wrong with asking the right questions, is there? That's being scientific. It, it it makes me sad that the, that that the country is coming to this and it's really bad <laughs> it's really bad somebody made a sta uh, quote one time that said that communism is forced slavery basically it's basically where Nobody really gets rewarded for doing a better job at something, which, by the way, that's what it really comes down to. You can, you can build houses at, you know, 12 houses per year, or you can build houses at, like, two houses per year. There's a big difference there for how many resources you're consuming. You know, if the person who builds two houses per year is going to Starbucks every single day, and they're getting their shoes polished every day, and they're getting a haircut every other week, and getting, you know, they're consuming way more than what they're producing. And communism says, well, everyone just gets the same. Okay, there's, there's forced slavery, essentially, because the people who are working their butts off don't get paid for what they do. Okay, in socialism, she said in this quote, communism is forced slavery, but she said socialism is slavery by vote. So if you just go with what's voted for, eventually you're going to have lots of people who are just comfortable. Oh yeah, I get, I get my, I get a house to live. In. I got money. I get food and all this stuff. But it, oh, if somebody gets more than 30000 a year, 
well, they should get nothing from the government. This person was working their butt off and using their money to help them work to get that 30000 a year. They can't afford their own children. They can't afford to go to the doctor. They can't afford to go to the ER or whatever. And yet you, without working, you get all this free time to write your, to produce your own content, to go get money however you get money on the side or whatever, or you just get free time to relax. And then you, because you don't make that much, you get free money from the government. You get the tax money that the other person who's working hard is making. And then you vote. Oh, yeah. Keep those rules. Yeah, vote. Keep those rules in place. I like getting this free, free money. And they have no idea how, how hard it is. And this could be over 50% of the population that would vote that way. Because you, you can survive on 50% of the... You can technically survive on 50% of the population working their butts off. I mean, productivity is skyrocketing. You can survive on very few people working, actually. Considering how the manufacturing process is and, and things like that. You can survive on very few people actually doing labor. But when you're talking about innovating and what we're capable of and quality of life... I mean, ideally, everyone would want to work as best they can. And people should get rewarded for what they've produced, for what inventions they've, they've given. And they don't. They hardly, they've never, it's never been that way. Especially mathematicians, I mean, but... So if there's no check and balance system, then you have people just demand, demand, demand. But then those same people are the same type of people who are like, well, I've never been able to, to code well. Well, I've never been able to, you know, I have health problems. I can't, I can't do construction well. Oh, I, I have this and that and this and that. I ignore my health problems. I got my teeth... I got my teeth extracted even though no dentist recommended it because I had artificial, because I could tell that the artificial tooth in my mouth was affecting my body. Okay. I sometimes have to sacrifice doing what I believe is the best way to do things in order to just support in order to just follow the rules and follow the system in place you know i respected and worked for my boss at that software company even though i thought i had ideas that were a thousand times better And there's people out there who have zero ideas and who are doing zero work. And they just like to get, you know, $200 a month for free, for food. That they don't have to work for. They don't have to pull that out of their taxed labor hours. They don't have to go out in the cold and spend hundreds of dollars on just coats and leggings to keep them warm and earn, you know, 10 to $12 an hour in the freezing cold trying to keep their job just to make enough to buy a little bit of food to get by, which is what some people who have plenty of knowledge, plenty of ability to invent things are doing. And they're not able to invent those things. They're not able to produce those things because they're the ones being forced to do all this labor because they're not going to take some check they're not going to lie and and tell the military oh yeah i got this mental health problem blah 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 i want a free check for the rest of my life there are people out there who legitimately do the work 
and you're killing your own society, your own world, by going and getting your $5 coffee every day, which I've, when I was a student, I would spend I actually fell into that myself. I would I was spending too much at restaurants and things like that. Of course I was hurting my, myself in the process. But it just goes to show how easy it was to fall into that trap even you know just from having a little bit, bit of money in the, in the military. I'm going to stand up for what's right on every topic. I'm always going to stand up for what's right on every topic. That's just the way I am. I've always been that way. Um, now, I might let you down. I'm not a superhero, okay? I'm not the person that I'm telling you to look up to. Um, but I do want to shed some light. If, I, if I'm, you know, some source of light where you you say wow that's i want to learn something from you tim good learn something but i'm not saying that i'm perfect i'm not saying i'm not going to let you down but what i'm saying is that's what i want to do is stand up for its right on every topic possible it doesn't matter how ridiculous it is you know it doesn't matter if it's it's if it's people talking about they they think there's a flat earth I like to approach, I like, that's like, to me, that's like the perfect example of a topic that you can approach, you can show how do you approach a question scientifically. Like, how do you, if somebody comes up with a model that, that doesn't contradict any data, great. If it doesn't contradict any data, Great. It's an opinion that, you know, that we're made up of particles. That's not data. That's an opinion. That's just an idea. That's just a model. So, um, no matter what it is, just stick to the truth. Don't worry about what other people think. And eventually you will find out that most people will be against you. Most people won't like you. Most people will laugh at you. Even people you really respect, you really like, are going to let you down in this area that I'm talking about because it will be difficult, but it's the right thing to do. It is the right thing to do. It doesn't matter how deep it is. It doesn't matter how convinced you are about some topic. And you think, oh, I'm just fighting for the right thing, fighting for the right thing, fighting for the right thing. And then someone comes up with some statement that counters like a lot of things you're thinking. It, do it doesn't matter what the context is. It doesn't matter. You answer the statement. You respect the statement. If you have evidence or proof directly countering the statement, then you give that. If you don't, then you don't have it. Say, yeah, that could be true. Yeah, that could be a conspiracy. Yeah, this could be, you know. In your own reasoning, stick to the truth. This is like an inductive thing. You don't just stick to the truth at one level and then everything beneath that, you just kind of, oh, I think the truth is you know, we should get these vaccines. And then, like, you just say whatever you want to support that because you just, you assume that that's the truth. That's not how it works. Every statement, fight for the truth. Every sub-statement, fight for the truth. Every paragraph, every sentence, every word, every letter, fight for the truth. All right. That's my rant, and uh, I'll see you guys later.